Okay, folks, so the final video of this chapter focuses on the psychology of software testing. There's some inherent issues to consider whenever your job is to look through someone else's work and find all the problems. Um, it's a different perspective than a lot of the other members of the team that you'll be working with, and it's something that could be portrayed very negatively unless you handle your job with some key points in mind. So that's the sort of thing we're going to be discussing over the next few minutes. So start off with uh, this cartoon and um, it sort of gives the general idea of the software testers versus the software developers. In this case we have the doctor who's a software developer and uh, he's an optimist. He says he's half alive, I'm happy with it, I'm doing my job and then we have someone else coming along, uh, the tester saying well no he's half dead. Um, the doctor is seeing the positives and the software tester is being critical and seeing the potential negatives in the situation. So uh, let's look at that in a bit more detail. Here we have uh, the developer and um, they're looking that they're developing software of acceptable quality and it can have a, an it'll do kind of uh, reaction to it. They tend to focus on what actually works and what the positive uh, positives are from a particular piece of software. And their opinion of testers are they're always too negative, they're very pedantic and can't just let it go. Tester, on the other hand, always has the preconceived notion that software contains defects. And from all the material we chatted about uh, in other aspects of this chapter, we know that's true. Um, where humans are involved in software test, or sorry, in software development, um, we are going to have defects. They assume because they have problems that it's probably not going to work and as a result of this they tend to look for what doesn't work rather than focusing on what does. Again, it's the mindset, it's what they're employed to do. Uh, as a result of that, they tend to think that developers are too optimistic when it comes to evaluating their software. So at this point it's nice to have a chat about the levels of independence. So um, who is the software tester um, within an organisation or within a team? It can come in different forms or different levels of separation. So developers, the people who actually write the software, they will actually test it as they work their way through it and build it, but obviously this is the least level of independence. When you have the, the same person developing and testing the software, we can see an obvious conflict in that situation. Uh, we can have someone else from the development team, but then if we think back to the previous slide and the mindset of a developer, we can still see how potentially that could cause some issues when it comes to you know independent and critical testing. It can be someone from a different group, so an independent test team or a set of test specialists, and this is the model that we do see quite often uh, in industry at the moment. Or this would happen particularly where we have safety critical or industry standardized uh, software systems, a bit like the uh, autopilot system we mentioned in the previous video, um, we'd have someone from a different organization or company coming in to do that. Another example would be electronics e testing. We have company A will create an electronic product such as a TV and then it goes off to another organization where it'll get C approved which means it can be means all, meets all the European electrical safety standards and can be sold in Europe. So there we have different levels of independence from no independence at all right through to quite a large amount of separation and it has a number of benefits and drawbacks um, from each side of the scale. So let's have a look at the reception of defect identification from the rules of the test and the developer as well. So whenever we find a defect, the tester thinks happy days, I've done my job well, I've saved the organization time and money and I've also reduced the risk this product's going to have a better chance now when it goes, to mark, goes out to market. A developer, on the other hand, can see it as a personal attack, a criticism of their work and themselves as well. Ha the relationship handled badly. This can obviously turn into quite a big problem, but there are a number of steps we can take to make sure that that issue doesn't come about. So how do we maintain good relationships among the team? So, first of all, it's all about promoting collaboration, not battle. The test team, the development team, and other stakeholders are working together to produce the best possible piece of software. It's not about finding mistakes in other people's work. It's about working together to build the best product the team can. As part of that, remembering that you all have that common goal is going to be very useful. Failures themselves, when a software tester is reporting the failures, do it in a neutral fact-focused way, so it's not an attack on that person or their individual development skills. You're focusing on the facts, the, the specific bits that don't work. 
understand how the other person feels. I mean, empathise on it. Imagine your first piece of software testing uh, assignment work, and I really come down on you, attack you personally, question why you're even undertaking this master's course. You're not going to feel very good um, about that. Um, you may take it as a personal attack, and even if the mark, etc., or whatever you've got, is not that bad, uh, it's probably going to have a very negative impact and bleed into your ongoing work. Same thing happens in industry, so whenever you're reporting the problems, consider how the other person feels when you're doing it. You still need to report the facts, you still need to objectively and critically analyse the work, but when you report back, you can do it in such a way that's least likely to cause offence and cause personality problems. There's lots of different personality types out there as well. I'm sure you've came across plenty and um, you probably even have members of your family that if you have the same piece of news to tell them, you'll probably tell them in different ways because they react in different ways. The same thing is true uh, in a software development team. Think about who it is that you're actually working with. Think about what their personality type is and think about the best way to actually communicate with them, can communicate with them regarding software defects. And finally, and this is a really important one quite often overlooked, is make sure the other person actually understands what you said, um, the defect you found, the problems. And in the same way, make sure that you understand their feedback to it. I've mentioned in the lecture previously that a software tester may uh, identify a potential defect, but that might not actually be a bug. There may be um, some reasoning behind that, which means that test is, even though it's failed, it's actually not a bug and is part of the expected behaviour. So don't just assume that you find a defect and you're definitely right. It is a discussion and both people need to understand the other person's point of view to actually get the decision right. So on that note, what sort of thing makes a good tester? Um, curiosity. You know, you like to know how things work. You're not just happy that it works. You want to know what happens from stage to stage. You want to know how you're getting the right answer and how you're getting the wrong answer You know, from a piece of software. Professional pessimism, a critical eye, you could say as well. Um, you don't just assume that something works. Again, it's that whole thing. You desire to step through and know what it's doing from the input data to what it's you know spat out at the other side. Good communication is essential because even if you find that defect, you need to be able to write it up in a way that the software development team can understand. You need to present uh, all of your defects in a way that your client are going to understand, that the project manager can understand. So taking that complex and technical information and being able to present it in such a way that's easily understood by others is going to be very important. Uh, there will also be the need to communicate well in writing and presentations, to use virtual communication tools like Skype to you know, talk across the world, um, different cultures. So communication, I can't stress how important that is in any IT rule, but particularly software, uh, software testing. Uh, and then experience in which the base error guessing. So you need to be able to adapt your knowledge from different situations and apply it. So for example, Everybody watching these videos now will be an expert web user who's used the internet and websites for years, probably. Um, one thing I'll be looking for you guys to do during the course of uh, this module is to actually bring that experience as an expert website user and apply it and to help you become a better software tester. Folks, that's the end of this final video. Uh, if you've watched all the others, do please remember to take part in the quiz by the deadline. All the information for that will be available on our VLE. As always, any questions, do please give me a shout at